Philadelphia. All right, Aftershocks TV, and we got a great one for you guys today. Most of you know my guest here is a legendary voice from the iconic New York hardcore band Crowbags and that all-time classic record, The Age of Quarrel. And today we're talking about Souls, the new release from Blood Clot. Happy to have with me Mr. John Joseph. John, man, how you doing, bud? Thanks for coming on. I hey, what's it. happening, bro? Not much, not much, man. Just Thanks again. for having me. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Thanks for coming on. Well, uh, John, man, Blood Clot, uh, the new record, man, Souls. It's out now in Upstate Records. And, uh, you know, the first thing, man, I think that people notice right away when you hear this record is is stylistically, musically, I should say, way different than the last record, then Up in Arms back in 2017. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about that in just a minute. But before we get into that, I mean, just for our, our listeners and viewers who may not be aware of really the origins, uh, the origins, excuse me, of Blood Clot, Obviously, everyone knows you as the ex-frontman for uh, for Crow Mags, but they may not be aware that Blood Clot was actually a band that you had kind of started really before you joined Crow Mags back in the day in the early 80s there. So just go ahead and give everyone a little bit of a background of how this band uh, came to right. fruition years ago. So, so in 81, the, the original Crow Mags started, and we rehearsed at 171 studio. So it was me, Harley, Dave Hahn, the Bad Brains manager, and then mm -hmm. Dave Stein. And those guys, uh, Dave Stein and Dave Hahn, if you read the Big Takeover article, they tell you why they quit. They couldn't deal with somebody in the band. And they were like, I'm not a doormat for some little kid with a fucking attitude. So the band broke up. Okay. And I was already working with the Bad Brains, so um, we started this band with Alvin, who was the roadie. He played drums. Uh, they, uh, Jerry Williams, JW, who was the Bad Brains producer of the legendary Raw cassette, mm -hmm. and it was his studio. And then we had Teddy <laughs> from uh, playing bass. He was. He does this band like Papa Chubby or whatever. He he he, okay. he became some like funk dude, but you know we just jammed and started writing songs. And then when the Chromag thing fell apart, I went on tour with Bad Brains, right? So I, I was the drum tech slash roadie. So that's how. So we had three members of the band on on the tour, you know, me, J.W. Mm -hmm. and Alvin. So we just used the bass player from Crucial Truth, the opening band, played bass with us, and we played, opened up for the Bad Brains every day. And, you know, that was kind of the start of the, the band back then. And we came back after the tour. We played Irving Plaza with, like, uh, the Necros and... Mm -hmm some other bands and bad brains yeah so it's just been uh you know that's the original lineup and then you know i went and became a monk for a couple of years and then when i came back went back rekindled up the crow mags and blood clock kind of got shelved for a long time and until you know the thing i did with danny Schuler and scott roberts and you know, and then Danny went back to play with Biohazard. So to me, it wasn't the same band. And, you know, and then, you know, the thing with Todd, you know, he relapsed and got some of that fentanyl. So mm -hmm. that was that. But, mm -hmm. you know, the difference in the sound is, you know, when you play with different people, just like if you look at the Burn Babylon Burn record, right? It was a different sound, mm -hmm. whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm working with Scott. He was tuned down a little bit, whatever the fuck, Rick Lopez. And then Todd, we did the more punk thing, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and then this record, you know, with Tom Capone. And mm -hmm. me and him did the writings and, and you know, and obviously I give Darren credit too, because he wrote the drum parts. You can't say, you know, somebody didn't have a hand in the creative writing when it's like they're sitting there putting the drum beats on there. It's been my, you know, my argument a lot. It, everybody that's there contributed to the songwriting, you know, the, the way at Darren plays the drum or the beat or whatever mm -hmm. that contributes to the song. So everybody should get writing credit and, 
you know, Manny from Glassjaw was playing bass with us and then he fucking just disappeared, right? While we're getting ready to do pre-production for this and mm. he had some kidney disease. Oh, shit. So he's like, dude, I just got out of the ICU for like a month and like I can't leave home or nothing. So I asked uh, Craig to do it, you know, from mm. Sick of It All. And he stepped in at the last minute and just came in and crushed the bass tracks. Mm. Well, you know, um, like I was going to say, yeah, I mean, I, you alluded to before, I mean, Up in Arms, definitely more of uh, your last record, it was definitely more of a classic, car, you know, hardcore sound. Um, <laughs> and like you mentioned, it had to do with the late great Todd Youth, who played the guitar in the record. And of course, Todd, as you mentioned, unfortunately passed away about a year or so after the album came out, which obviously, I mean, not About only a I, year, yeah, man, right? yeah, that must have been. I mean, not only, not only a tough time for you personally. I mean, obviously, you've, I know I've gone back so many years with with Todd, but also in terms of really, I guess the band's momentum too. I mean, that must have obviously yeah, not the fucking wind out of our sails. Yeah. We were fucking, we did one tour with Negative Approach, and then mm -hmm. like. You know, fucking shit went great. These bands was all hitting us up. We had, you know, and and then that happened. And it's like, I didn't even, it's like, you don't even want to like continue with playing the music when your friend dies like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but just even to make this record, all, all the shit that we had to go through because, you know, I, I ran into Tom in New York and we had lunch. And I was like, he's like, yeah, man, I love that record. I fucking play along to it. I was like, what? And we, I was like, at that point, it was a couple of years since Todd died. And this was 2019. Mm -hmm. And he played me like his sh the shit that for the record. And I was like, holy shit. I was like, I don't want this band to just go to waste and then we went i told joey and nick and we me and tom flew out to california and then we rehearsed and they were like they couldn't believe it they were like he fucking nailed every song and um and then the, and then hold on i gotta turn this off and then the fucking pandemic hit and that was that nobody could travel nobody could do nothing and i was like these dudes are not going to fly in from California and we're not flying out there. I, I told them, I said, look, Joey and Nick, I got to get, so, I got to get dudes on the East coast to play, man. Mm -hmm. I want to write a new record. And that's where, um, you know, Darren had toured, he filled in for Mackie on the hate breed tour when we went out with them and he killed it and he was a great dude and fucking crazy drummer. So, mm -hmm. Got him and then got, uh, forget who hooked me up with uh, Manny. It might have been Tom, but we asked him to play bass and he was like, he's a fucking monster. And then, like I said, we had to like sneak into studios to do, it, it was just crazy. Everything in New York City was locked down. Mm. <laughs> it was, you know, one thing after another. And uh, me and Tom kept getting together at my apartment or his apartment, and we kept writing. And we wanted to record, you know. And Laz from El Nino, I did something for Rob Dukes' his new project. I sang on a song. Okay. And we had demoed the songs already, and, and, and Laz... Last from El Nino, he was around in the fucking 90s and everything. He's old school. Mm, sure. So he was like, what are you doing now? I was like, I'm, I got these songs, you know. He goes, let me hear some of it. And I put it on the studio sound system. He's like, holy shit. Like, what are you guys doing with this? I was like, he's like, come in here and record it. I was like, bet. So we made the whole arrangement. And then the stu the building next to his studio in, in Hoboken burned down and his Good. studio was deemed not structurally safe by the fire department, like right like a week before we we're supposed to record. Jeez, man. Wow. Then we had to do the drums at this dude's house and the bass and guitar here. And then 
I sang in a fucking shower curtain setup that they made into a vocal booth, dude. Like, wow. <laughs> I mean, it's just, you don't give up on something, you know? Yeah. I learned that through Iron Man. I learned that through life. Like we're gonna go through so much shit, and it's what we do in those moments that determine who we are. And you know, somebody in the band was like, when that happened, like, "Yo, I, I don't want to," you know, whatever the fuck. And then Manny couldn't do it. We, we, I go, "Yo, we can't quit." The steam is rolling, dude. The, the fucking train's pulling out of the fucking station. So I hit up Craig and, you know, like I said, we did the shit here and there. But when you have the fire, I'm 60 years old. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I never lost my fire to play music. I never lost my fire to be creative, to do shit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to quit, mm -hmm. you know? Just like the Tompkins Square Park shit show, shit was going on and mm -hmm. people wanted to be like, I said, fuck that, man. We're fucking doing the show. That's it. We're not fucking backing down. Mm -hmm. People were talking shit because we played a show. I'm like, the yeah. fuck is wrong with you motherfuckers, man? <laughs> this is our form of protest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole city opened up the next fucking day anyway. They were putting 60,000 motherfuckers in in Shea Stadium and fucking uh, in Yankee Stadium and all this shit. Mm -hmm. At the same time we did a concert, there was a thousand hip hop motherfuckers with DJs in the other side of the park, smoking blunts inside mm -hmm. the basketball courts, fucking shoulder to shoulder. Nobody said nothing. Said nothing, right? Yeah, wow. forbid, the punk rock motherfuckers who were saying something against the government That's stepped it. the fuck up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's it. Exactly. It's and, what and, you and, and, message. And, and it's like, even for this record, cancel culture motherfuckers wrote our label. They wrote distributors. Don't carry the record. This, that, the other. It just, I'm like, dude, we're living in like bizarro world in yeah. Seinfeld. Yeah. Punk yeah. Rock was supposed to be the one standing up. You know, where's all the, you know, fucking there's no justice. They're just us mm -hmm. uh, speeches and all yeah. the rest of the shit. Mm hmm. So it, you know, from the show to the record to the recording, it's 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 been a test of our desire. How bad do you fucking want this? And we never fucking quit. Mm -hmm. And now people got the record in their hands, and they're like, "Holy shit!" Because it's real. Like mm -hmm. I was talking with Tom, and, and we're like, "Yo, everything we were going through, the way souls went down." The writing of that song, you know, mm -hmm. what it, it, we were living through it, and Tom was pissed off because we decided we weren't going to take what the government was giving out, right? Mm -hmm. And then they locked us out of everything in New York and all the bullshit and all the shit talk. And I said, Tom, pick up your fucking guitar. This is what artists do. When the shit is like this, that's what the bad brains did. Look at all the racism they dealt with and all this shit. I was there for that. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And they 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 wrote songs like Fearless Vampire Killers. They wrote fucking The Big Takeover. All these fucking songs were anti-establishment. And if they tried to put that record out during this whole shit, oh. what we did, they would be canceled too. Absolutely. Black mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I mean, yeah, let's, I mean, you know, in terms of the now, lyrics uh, on Souls here, um, obviously, well, yeah, ly lyrically, I mean, obviously, you know, anyone who follows you over the years knows, you know, how vocal you've been <coughs> about, you know, also the media and its manipulative tactics that they use. Really for decades. For decades, absolutely. For now, yeah. Mm -hmm. For decades, my message has not changed. Look what I wrote mm -hmm. in the Crow Mags. Yep. I wrote those fucking words on that record. I don't give a fuck what anybody fucking says. I wrote fucking malfunction, seekers of the truth, signs of the times, the chorus on hard times. Fucking it's the limit. All that shit. Malfunction. Like, look at what the fuck we got to know. What the fuck am I talking about? We got to mm -hmm. know the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the records, all the shit. It's, nobody ever had a problem with it 
when I called out Bush for fucking bombing motherfuckers illegally, you know, up in arms, all of that shit. Even burn Babylon burn. What's the opening shit to, 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 to the big brother take over? With self-righteousness, they take over everything. Yeah. Homogenize a movement so it don't mean a thing. What the fuck do you think I was talking about there? Look what's going on now with hardcore punk rock. It's fucking homogenized, boiled yeah. down to be fucking nothing and mean nothing. Mm -hmm. If you don't stand behind the words that you write and sing along to and stage dive to and all this shit, if you don't live that shit, then it's an act. It's a fucking, it's a performance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why every right. fucking note on this record, we were feeling it. We were living it. And even the one song, Infectious, that was the last song that me and Todd wrote together. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like that was mm -hmm. one of the bonus tracks that we never got to record on, on Up in Arms. But we laid it down in the studio because... I knew it was a great song and we were singing about how humans have become the virus on this planet. That was before any pandemic. Mm -hmm. Infectious, we're the virus, humans, we kill each other. We kill the planet. We kill all life on this planet. Infectious like a virus, we've become a plague. Everything is vanquished, nothing is saved. I mean, and then because it was Pro Tools, we were able to link up the click tracks, get the original files, and keep Todd's background vocals in there as well as his lead. Mm. <clears throat> so that's Todd singing with me on the on the choruses. Okay. We just tucked him underneath, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and I'm, I'm gonna I want to get to that song in a minute too, because you know it's that is a a track that's that's a little different on the record that i really like um i know some of these purists out there you know hardcore purists are kind of you know some of them are saying well you know it's a little alternative it's just what that actually reminds me a little bit you know is is actually uh, a band that used to front back in the 90s uh reminds me a little bit of of both worlds it has sort of that yeah. alternative you know uh rock metal thing and both worlds i remember i was interning at roadrunner records when wow uh, when you were putting that out, yeah, I mean, I mean, you, still, man. you know, yeah, you you were in there all the time pushing out. I mean, you were doing interviews. I mean, they, you know, that was a record I think that really just didn't. The only reason why it didn't take off, I think, it was the timing because I thought it was a great record. Well, they I, they, you know. they they promised us in the contract a certain amount of tour support, and then like a week before we're going out, they're like, "We're cutting your tour support." I was like, "Well, I'm not going on tour," and they were like, "Good, you're dropped." Wow, yeah, that's how that went down. You don't, you don't, mm. you don't. You know, we're grown ass men. We had bills to pay. I, I'm not fucking 17 years old going to sleep on people's fucking floors like I did in 81. Sure. You know, mm -hmm. like, and we had Michael Barbieri fucking produce the record. I, 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 I mean, I wasn't in agreement with every track that came on there, but there was some that I really liked, you know? Yeah. I thought it, I thought it was a great record, man. I guess I, I just think that the timing, because at that point you had all the Limp Biscuits and all that new metal, just started to take hold, and that's where I think most of the labels just would drop in everything that wasn't sounding like that really at the time, yeah. you know. And you know, man, I, you know what I love? I, I saw an interview with fucking Frank Zappa, and he was talking about some. 60 year old, 70 year old music executive that was like. I don't know what it is, but let's put it out. Let's see what happens. And then mm -hmm. he talks about what the music industry is today. Like, and this was going back a few years, obviously, because Frank passed away. But Zappa was like, it's these fucking wet behind the ears, college kids coming out of college. They don't want to risk anything. Mm -hmm. God forbid we put out a record that flops. I mean, the whole music industry is fucking done now. Oh, yeah. It doesn't mm -hmm. even fucking matter. And now they found a way to rip everybody off. They make all the money on band camp, like on all these fucking like music websites. Mm -hmm. I, well, it, you know, yeah, they're even, making all the money in the, you know, unless you're an artist selling fucking, you know, 20 million downloads, you ain't getting fucking getting shit. shit. You ain't getting shit. You, you yeah. make your money going on, you make your money touring. Mm -hmm. 
And even that's getting hard just because of what's going it's on. expensive with- just to tour. I mean, just to go out on tour now, yeah. it's going to get, you know, it's, yeah, it's like, exactly. what's the point so, of it? You, yeah. you know, I mean, we got a show coming up in New York on the 14th, but we'll see what happens. You know, I mean, if somebody wants us to go open for them or whatever the fuck, no problem, you know? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Well, now, now with the musically too on in this record, just getting back to that real quick. I mean, it's funny because yeah, you know, you, you said Tom Capone, you know, obviously known really from quicksand. Um, not really, you know, when you hear this music, it's you, you, like I said, you, you, I mean, you guys tapped into like some old school, really crossover thrash stuff. I mean, we're talking like Slayer, you know, creator it has a lot of those, that those elements to it, which is, I mean, I, like I said, this is a phenomenal record. I mean, anybody who loves that kind of music is going to love this record. So, I mean, what was it that made guys like yourself and Tom not really known for for that kind kind of sound, that kind of metallic sound? What what made you guys go in this direction this time around? We didn't. It wasn't anything conscious. We okay. Like, this is the vibe we were feeling. Boom. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tom came up with a riff. I I was like, yo, hum this in here. Like the way we wrote the shit was like, I don't play an instrument, but I can hum melodies and like figure out. Like Tom would just write like ten parts, and I would be like, yo, I start doing the math. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. Take this part, make this the pre-chorus. Pa- like you know, all of these songs, mm-hmm. like. That's what that's that's what we did, but it was a vibe. It was a vibe of intensity, like the world fucking spun out of fucking control in the last. Yeah, and it's years. still out of control. Still out of control, it's yeah. Insane. Like, mm-hmm. there's never. Here's my point. There was never a time in my lifetime that I've seen the new world order and all the shit everybody's been singing about big brother taking over shit. We're actually witnessing this before our fucking eyes and experiencing it. And everybody fucking went along with it. Yeah. Sorry. You fucking sold the fuck out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the musicians all shut the fuck up because they wanted to sell their shit or whatever. And then anybody that spoke out against it, they fucking tried to destroy mm-hmm. purposely. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I lo- I had my first account of 127,000. They ruined my fucking business that I was coaching business, everything. Just because I, I spoke my fucking mind. Where's the freedom of fucking speech? <clears throat> yeah. When the government, everybody says fascism, fascism. Nobody, I, I said, what does fucking fascism mean? They don't even fucking know. They don't read. I know. What, yeah, you, I know. what mm. you saw go down was fascism. Yeah. The government colluded with corporations, corporations. to control the masses. Absolutely. That is the definition in the dictionary of fucking fascism. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Yeah, I agree, man. Absolutely. What you saw go down. They ruined people's fucking lives that spoke out against them. They took doctors' licenses. There was one narrative. And that's why I love Joe Rogan because fucking my that dude's my homeboy. I have more respect for him than fucking any of these fucking vegans who fucking also tried to destroy me. Mm-hmm, because sure Joe was like, why is there only one guy? Why is there only one narrative on this shit? Yeah. And he gave a platform to the other experts. He did. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now yeah. guess what? Everything those motherfuckers said came out to be true. And then you got hardcore people that fucking haven't read a book since Superman died saying, oh, that guy's a fucking idiot. He don't know what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, he's got hundreds of medical papers published, peer-reviewed studies published in the top medical journals around the planet. I want to hear what he has to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you had the opportunity for every band to step up and call this shit out, and nobody did. (laughs) <laughs> except for a few. Mm-hmm. Well, where, I mean, where... was writing me, man. I feel the same way. I just can't say anything because, you know, I don't want the fucking mob coming after me. Yeah. And well, yeah. It's mm-hmm. this mob rule shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I just wasn't down with it, man. I kept an open mind. I looked at all sides. I listened to the other experts who now what they said was the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, you, following the facts, man. You know, uh, bottom hey, line. Man, face you the know? fucking facts. That's another yep. Chromex song that I wrote. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what do you think, you know, with, like you said, because of all these musicians keeping quiet, I mean, what do you think that's done? I mean, do you think, especially with the hardcore, like you said, hardcore has been known, you know, traditionally for decades about, you know, railing against this type of shit. I mean, do you think it's, is it obviously, I mean, obviously it's not a good thing for the scene, but do you think this is going to sort of cleanse out? I mean, is it going to sort of reinvigorate maybe the scene or do you think the scene is just completely dead because of all this shit now? I mean, what's your... I think there's like different scenes now, man. Okay. I, okay. I don't know. I don't, Listen, man, I don't care who comes to my motherfucking shows, whatever the fuck, or if you don't want to come, I don't give a fuck either. I look at it this way. I'm not going to change who the fuck I am because the media fucking... You know, like I said, mass formation, psychosis all over the place. You're telling me I'm crazy, but it's right in your face. War mm. castles. Like, yeah. I'm not changing. I'm not changing who the fuck I am. I didn't change. And I talked to my friend who knew me from the early Bad Brains days. And he's like, dude, I've known you for 42, <coughs> going on 43 years. You never changed. They changed. Mm-hmm. They fucking changed. There was bands kicking out band members because they wouldn't take the fucking shot. Yeah, that's that's sad, man. I know. I'm and I know who you. they are. I'm not because I, I, I was having the fucking motherfuckers call me up and tell me like, "Yo, I can't believe they're doing this shit." Like they've been my. I thought these people were my friends and shit. They let. Government and corrupt corporations get in between their friendships and their families and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's despicable what went on. And, you know, this record was made in, in, in the, under the umbrella of all this insanity that was going on. So like, we didn't sit down and be like, let's write this type of song. Let's like, Tom would just start playing shit. And I'd be like, he would work on riffs. Mm -hmm. This dude is a fucking musical genius, man. Yeah, he's awesome, yeah. You don't mm -hmm. have any idea. Yeah. The quicksand shit, he never got the credit <coughs> for, like, slipping all this shit. But mm -hmm. I just worked with him, and I'm like, this dude will sit there and chunk out, fuck, come, like, and the next day he'll have, like, ten riffs for you to pick through, you know? Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? I'm like, yo, that's dope. <laughs>
you know, just to get to a couple of the tracks, I mean, one I wanted to start with, obviously you talked about a little bit, uh, was, is the title track souls. Um, I guess you had crossover thrash, like we've been talking about the video also very graphic, obviously in terms of, you know, yeah, Todd Newman did that. The guy okay. who did the, uh, documentary on Dave Navarro. So he's a filmmaker. He, 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 you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, I mean, I guess just talk a little bit about, I mean, you've, you've been kind of, you know, obviously talking a lot about what you wrote on the record, um, you know, songs like that. Obviously, the one of the songs that really sticks out to me, too, was the New York Hardcore flavored one, Save the Robots and Relentless. Those two really are those are the sort of throwback uh, hardcore songs. Unhinged. You know, Unhinged, yep. Mm -hmm. Another one. Decepticons, Fill the Ranks, Sold Their Souls, Shooting Blanks, TV Idols, TVOD, All My Heroes Abandoned Me. Veil is lifted, some can see, others walk to destiny. I mean, do you, I mean, does it, John, does it feel to you? Cause you know, it's, it's interesting just talking to you. I mean, not many people, musicians are coming out and saying, like you said, they're not saying anything, you know, I mean. Hey, what, I, did, what did they say in the eighties during the AIDS shit? Nobody wanted to talk bad about all the shit that was going on. And the, and the person that ran the whole thing with the AZT is the same motherfucker that ran the shit during this. And he blocked all the other medications to sell that product, which killed um, most of the yep. people that had AIDS, not AIDS. AZT killed the people. Right. Mm -hmm. And nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to fucking say anything. Um, I mean, how does that make you? I mean, it's got to. I mean, like I said, just you know, you. But, you but what did they say back then? Silence equals death. It was death, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what we've seen, obviously, Listen, a lot of because of it. Yeah. My you know. teacher Prabhupada mm -hmm. said one thing very important, and I'll never forget it. He goes, "Never be surprised at the people that go. Be surprised at the people that stay." I was never surprised by all these people that turned out to be fucking sellouts. Mm. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't care if you just wanted to keep quiet and you went about your business and did whatever. But most of the scene turned against the people that spoke up. That's the yeah. motherfuckers I have a problem with. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada said, don't be surprised at the ones that stay, that go. Be surprised at the ones that stay. Be surprised at the fucking ones who rose up, the real revolutionaries that spoke up during this shit. Mm -hmm. And... They didn't have Bad Brains t-shirts on or fucking Black Flag or going to, you know, a lot of people, it was a lot of people from all over the place that spoke up. And, and the thing that gets me the worst was if you did, the narrative that they ran with that where you were this right-wing conspiracy yeah. theorist and all this other fucking mm -hmm. bullshit, dude. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. like, my record speaks for itself. I've called out every fucking president, Trump, Obama, fucking... Bush, Clinton, every fucking one of them, mm -hmm. Biden. Yeah, I but, think well, most people don't realize it's it's two sides of the same coin with these parties and everything, man. You know, it's, it's fucking uh, it's yeah. two two wing, you know, it's two wings of the same bird. It's exactly. a fucking vulture. They're yeah. all in on it. They're laughing at you yes. that yeah. they're able to divide you while they keep fucking stealing and you're fucking fighting each other. Now there's another war, right? And what people don't know is that everybody was pushing for peace talks. The United States said no, because the United States is run by the military industrial complex. Mm -hmm. So now they're selling fucking million dollar bombs and all of this shit. We left fucking, what, 80 billion worth of equipment in, in, in Afghanistan. We could have just given that to fucking. Why didn't we just give that to fucking uh, to Ukraine? Mm hmm. No, because the military and industrial complex wanted to make more money. That's why I do research. Watch the movie Iraq for Sale, what Halliburton and all the rest of them did in Iraq. If there was a scratch on a Jeep, they fucking blew it up to make more money, more money, more money, more money. I mean, I mean you, you have these industries running this country, the, the, the pharmaceutical industrial complex, the military industrial complex. They're paying off all these corrupt politicians on both sides of the aisle. We're not benefiting. They are. Mm -hmm. 
I spoke out against everything. My record speaks for itself. Now I got people calling me a fucking racist and I'm a this, I'm a Trump supporter, a proud boy. It, it's just ridiculous. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, it, uh, the reaction, just at least in terms of, you know, lyrically, what you're doing with the record, has it been just that? Has it been a lot of, lot of like, sort of, Neg not to say negativity, but be uh, accusations. Um, I mean, obviously, you've been very vocal. No, the accusations media, came but... because, like, these people don't, they think now anybody who spoke out against the government since 2020 is a Trump supporter. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Bull fucking shit. So, I, listen, I can't worry about, it's yeah, not can. my job to worry about what all these okay. other motherfuckers think because you know what? They got programmed. That's the it's word. not my job. Yeah. My job as an artist is to put out my expression into the music or the writing, whatever, whatever I'm doing. That's mm -hmm. my job. My job ain't to worry about all these other motherfuckers like saying shit and saying shit behind false fucking pages and all this shit. I got to me, I'm like, I don't give a fuck about any of that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak my truth. And that's what I've done since day one. You know, when I started going to punk shows in 77, I lived the shit, man. Mm -hmm. I got 45 fucking years. Punk rock, then hard, I saw the birth of hardcore. Fucking 1980. All the way through. And making music the whole time. Le read the lyrics off every album fucking song I ever fucking wrote. All the stuff I wrote on Alpha Omega. I wrote Crush the Demoniac. Like, read the fucking lyrics what I'm writing. How do you think that fucking Age of Quarrel came about? The name Age of Quarrel. When I was in the temple, they were doing songs called Kill the Ayatollah. Fucking, I'm the one that injected the philosophy into the band. Mm -hmm. You know, I just well, lived as a monk for two years. And I needed to do that to get my soul straight. No. <laughs> but all of that wisdom from Prabhupada was put in Age of Quarrel. That's mm -hmm. what Age of Quarrel is, the Kali Yuga, the Iron Age of Quarrel and Hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So, and Hypocrisy. Remember that word. And who pushes hypocrisy? Hypocrites. Mm -hmm. Which is what 99.9% .9 of these fucking politicians are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Fucking hypocrites. Yeah, I Look agree. what's going on in the country right now. Motherfuckers can't even afford to fucking feed their families or heat their fucking houses, dude. I know. And we're sending know. all this money fucking with no regulation to ukraine mm -hmm. nobody he didn't even account for the first 55 billion fucking dollars yep. like people that i know in the military like deep in like ex special forces dudes and everything else are telling me the weapons we're giving them are turning up on the fucking black market it's fucking crazy yeah ukraine was one of the most corrupt fucking yeah, places Absolutely. Yeah, it's the hub for child sex trafficking in all of Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know, man. Yeah. Look what, look, look what this guy did to anybody who spoke out against him. He, he imprisoned fucking his political rivals. Look what they did to the Russians in, in, in the Donbass region. Fucking dude. How are you not seeing what the fuck is going on? Do you think it's people, uh, it's not so much you're not seeing, or it's just, like you said, it's just people feeling like, you know what, they don't <laughs> they don't feel like they could do anything about it, you know, meaning like they just, it's like you said. That's they, apathy, they, man. It is. I agree. I agree with you. I'm 100% with you. You know. I'm not, hey, I'm not, it's not an know, excuse. You, you know, know. Where's, where's all the people that were should have been protesting the anti- when there was an anti-war that America was getting involved in this shit and there was an anti-war protest at Union Square Park, you know who was out there holding signs? 80-year-old people that fucking, not one young person was standing with them. Well, this generation is not a fight, man. Dude, you know, they're, they're, this they're, generation, you know. I'm telling you right now, man, 
They're, they're manipulating... They're manipulating the minds of the fucking youth. Absolutely. Twisting reality away from the truth. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Yeah, well, that's what social media does. That's what all this shit does, you know, and, and it's designed to do. And then anybody said, who you know, has a difference of opinion, God forbid, they're going to fucking destroy you. Yep. Absolutely. It never was like that in hardcore. We would have to wait no, no. and fucking... We would sit there back in the day in 81 in the in the Bad Brains Jerry Williams studio with Dave from Reagan Youth and just talk philosophy and talk ideas. It was none of this shit that you see now. It's all group think oh, shit. Oh, you now. don't agree absolutely. with me. Group yeah. think is toxic. Yeah, absolutely. But that's where the record came from. That's, that's why right. it has the intensity that he does that it does. There's no poser bullshit on that. Now, knowing what I know about all these bands, now when I see them going on stage and doing their whole little song and dance, I'm like, it's an act. It's a fucking act. Metal fucking explosions and blood and, you know, you're soaking yourself in animal blood and pentagrams and then you're like, oh, can't come in the show if you don't do what the government says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, dude? I know, man. I know. I know. Anyway. Well, like you, anyway, but like you said, man, you've got this great record, Souls, man. Like I said, and it's great. You've been able to channel all that, you know, into this record. And I think it shows because it's got a lot of emotion to it. It's got yeah. it's just it's and, just got a lot of meat and, to it. And, man. And, and, and I want to thank Upstate Records and Pitchfork because they stood behind us. Mm. <clears throat> There's like a one year backlog to get any vinyl out now, and yeah. that's why you know we didn't do the full length because we we had to still. Uh, record and and then fucking ma mix and master and the timeline just didn't we wouldn't have been able to put anything out this year and to me we have an, a second ep coming that we'll start working on in the early in the late spring or whatever but my thing was to get um get something out this year man it meant a lot you know i lost my brother to drug so I got a bunch of projects I'm working on. I'm, I'm writing a book on addiction right now. I'm doing a documentary about old, about old school New York, a historical thing. Um, okay. I'm writing some scripted stuff. So, I mean, I, you know, I, I constantly keep working on stuff. That's, 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 uh, you know, that's what, that's what we had to do, but that's why the record came at, as uh as only seven songs you know mm -hmm. well i mean so and i i did i did also see that you just recently added uh x fear factory bassist christian and all the wolvers to the lineup yeah so is he now full-time member I, I, well, we'll is, see. well you know we'll see like like i said you know he he's still doing his violence band and whatever yeah. but yeah man yeah. we're gonna we're jamming together like i gotta go back up to new york on the ninth and then we got the gig on the 14th we'll see what happens but you know well, I mean, you know, I mean, he, he's down with us philosophically, and he's a bad okay. motherfucker, and he looks mm -hmm. and he plays his ass off on stage. So we'll see what happens, you know. Yeah. Now, in terms of touring, like you said, I mean, like we were talking about, it's it's just extremely tough just to to afford it. You have to, you know, basically you lose money on tour right now. I mean, it's just the way it's happening. Yeah. Uh, you know, but and I mean, there's no record labels to give you tour support, so like you know, exactly. I'm not spending my money to go on tour. I've no, done that before. <laughs> Yeah, it makes no sense. What's the point of it? My my thing is, is you know, you've got these two these two last records are just really, really, really awesome, man. I uh, you know, to me, I mean, it, it's blood clot with. I, you, I mean, obviously, historically, there's always been different band members. You usually take a lot of these really, you know, high profile member uh, band members from other groups that have joined blood clot. Like you talked about before, you had Scott Roberts uh, and Danny Shuler on the first record. Obviously, last record you had. You know Todd, and of course you had the you know Nick and uh, Joey from Queens of the Stone Age, Caius. With now with Tom, obviously, I mean I'm not sure what he's doing stuff, but I mean, is this going to be like a full time band? Because I really think that's yeah. the one thing a Blood Cloud needs to be is a full time. Absolutely, band. man. We yeah, play stuff cool. off the. You know we do we we play one of my favorite Chromax songs. We got we do one. You know we we play either one two X U or fucking. Uh, whatever the fuck, you know, how low can a punk get? And then we play stuff off every chrome, every, every, uh, blood clot record. So nice. Yeah, man. You know, listen, it doesn't have to be this whole, like, 
you're in a relationship. You can't see anybody else. Yeah. We're fucking like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we're fucking musicians. Like when we, when it's cool to play together, we will. Mm -hmm. And if somebody wants to have us come out for a week on the road, we will, whatever the fuck, you know, like, you know, music, music is part of what I do, but it's, it, I'm not a one trick pony, man. You know, mm -hmm. like I coach people, I do live speaking events I got a documentary coming out. We work with these prisoners that did over 20 years in the prison system and it's called 30 to life. I just saw the okay. edit on that. That's Very coming cool. probably this year on Netflix. And, you know, music's just a part of the whole shit, but it's, mm -hmm. it's the part that everything else expands off of, you know, that's right. like the nucleus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the other thing I was going to ask you too. I mean, now that you've you've got this, like you said, you're playing, you know, some Chromag songs in a live set. Um, are you? Is this finally now also your way with with this blood cloud as well? Now that you, because this has now been, you know, two records in the last five years. Is it is the Chromag stuff really now for you? I mean, in the rearview mirror. I mean, are you looking? Hundred percent. I don't yeah. like. Okay. You know, I don't give a shit what anybody else does. Fucking whatever. You know, it's just a lot of false information was put out there. Sure. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, straight up fucking lies. If you want to mm -hmm. get real about it. Like, if you read my book, and like I said, it's just a lot of bad energy around that that I don't, I, I don't need to be dealing with anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to make new music. That's why I went off with Todd and did Up in Arms. That's, you know, if you guys don't want to get in the studio and write some new shit, then it's, I'm going to go do something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and also, I know, uh, you know, you said you've been talking about your documentary you're doing. You got all this, you know, a lot of other things you do outside. You also, I uh, have some books out. Obviously, I know you, you've uh, recently, I think it was the last year, you released Hardcore Kitchen. That's one of the last books you did as Unfuck well. Unfuck Your Health, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Evolution of a Cro-Magnon, Meat is for Pussies. I got mm -hmm. five books out. Uh, the PMA Effect. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on book number six now. So, Very cool, man. Very cool. You know, I love writing. And like I said, when I write a book, I'm a writer. I went to fucking school for writing. It's not... John Joseph with somebody else and I got a ghost writer mm -hmm. or have somebody write my book and then take credit for it. I wrote every word on the fucking page, man. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's what I do. I love to write, man. I, I sit there, you know, it's one of the creative things I love, I love to do, you know, so, and yeah. I don't have to, it's up to me. If I turn on my 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 computer and I write scenes or I write parts for chapters, that's on me. I don't have to. There's not four other individuals. I got to fly in here and there and do this mm -hmm. at the rehearse. It's like, mm -hmm. am I going to get up and do it or not? Am I going to get up to train for this Iron Man or not? Mm -hmm. You know, I had I had a lot of adversity with that this year, too. I got fucking really sick in one race. I had a bike mechanical in my other. So I, I, I had two races I didn't finish this year. But that's not going to deter me from what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be setbacks. It's a test. How are we going to handle this test? And this whole thing from 2020 on was a major test. And that's what I saw. And I saw a lot of people fold like fucking Kmart suits. You know, it's a test. You just got tested. Big fucking time. Mm -hmm. That was a rollout of a test with everything, just like Event 201. Where everything, you know, one year before the whole shit, they have a fucking exercise. That I, you, you know, all these conspiracy theories keep coming true. True, right? Yeah, I know, right? Like uh -huh. fortune tellers, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I know. That's the second conspiracy theory once. It, the big takeover, another Nazi scheme. Yeah, man. Fucking I, dude, read the words. Read history, too. Read the yes, fucking words, know. man. Yeah. I know. There is evil motherfuckers planning evil shit to do to you and your fucking loved ones. 
Yeah. Wake the fuck up. It's us against them. Yeah. And if you sided with them, fuck you. That's what I got to say to you. Bam. I stuck together <laughs> with my people, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Most of them weren't from the hardcore scene. The hardcore scene tried to cancel me. The vegans tried to cancel me. Yeah. The 78 year old fucking grandmother that lived down the street from me was fucking standing right beside me, like, this is fucking fucked up. Mm -hmm. Speaking up, that's a fucking soldier. I don't care how many tattoos you got. I agree, man. 100%. And they're not yeah. done yet. You think they just did all this shit? Oh, it's just getting started. From it? This oh, yeah. is the start. Yep. Once they mm -hmm. get all the digital shit in place, they're going to control every fucking Everything. aspect of your life, dude. Absolutely, and absolutely. nobody's paying attention to what they just talked about at the G20. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum. Oh, this man. guy's like the ultimate villain. He How is. are you not putting him on blast? I don't get it either, man. Dude. I, you know, I know. I'm with you 100%. They've become that, attracted by the jewels on the head of a serpent. Yeah. They're attracted to that razzle dazzle. And then when you get close, it's the bite of death. Yep. Well, listen, always keep an open mind when there's only one narrative, and that's the only one they're allowing you to hear. You better fucking question where's the other people? Mm -hmm. Where's the other side to this story? In writing, it's called didacticism. When you fucking slant your argument and you only tell one side, that's bad writing. You that's give equal as much power to the controlling idea of a story or the theme of the story as you do to anti-theme. Well, that's the one thing we're missing. We, we, you know, like you said, no one's allowing that other side. Well, we just put it out. So if you yeah. want to hear the other side, read, check the record. There we go. And with that, there it is and right with there. That, Blood, we're Clot. Done. <laughs> yeah. Blood Clot Souls is out now. Upstate Records, Pitchfork Hardware. John, go ahead. Just tell the listeners and viewers where uh, they can go. And, and, you know, I've been encouraging people to go buy this stuff, not, not stream well, it. Well, it's almost rolled out on the first pressing, I think. But Upstate Records, Pitchfork has it. You know, we're doing a show. We got some copies. We're going to be signing at the show on the 14th in New York City with Underdog. <clears throat> so, you know, and, and then you could just listen to it for free if you want to. I say go buy it, you know what I mean? Why people not? Need to, buy a need to buy shirt, man. Support artists, man. Absolutely. It's the only way it's going it's to, this music's going to continue to come out. You got to support the artists. You know, back in the you day, gotta. I bought fucking shirts from all the bands and all this shit. I never was like, oh, mm -hmm. I've been on the scene 10 years. Give me free shit. I always fucking went and bought a fucking T-shirt. And, and and supported the band and, and, and whatever the fuck. I didn't even pay to get in. Everybody's a rock star now, right? Nobody wants to pay for shit. Well, I guess it is. And it's not the same experience, man. There's nothing like holding that record in your hand and reading the exactly, line. Exactly, or, or a book. Or a book or anything, exactly. So I just had fucking Juliette Lewis hit me up, the actress. She wants, mm -hmm. you know, she wants to read my book, and I go. You want me to send it audio book or digital? She's like, hell no, I'm old school. I like to hold the <laughs> book in my hand. Absolutely, man. Yeah. This <laughs> send it to that. Nice. Evolution of a crow. There we go. Nice. See? All, right. All right, man. Well, yeah, John, appreciate it, man. So once again, the album is Souls, Blood Clot. It's out now. Go check it out, everybody. And John, man, appreciate you coming on and talking with us, man, and being really uh, frank enough forward too. With see you in the pit. Yes.